Hi, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily, and I talk a lot about Salesforce. Today, we're going to be going over how to create a master detail relationship. Now, there are a few different ways that you can create this relationship, but we're going to do this the easiest way that I know possible and the way that makes the most sense visually. And it's just, I personally like it a lot better to do it in the schema builder rather than doing it through the object manager, just so you can have that oversight of what you're doing. So that's how I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, there are other options of how to do it. If you want to do it through the object manager, you can. It's just as simple as creating another field. But let's go ahead and jump into setup here. And then I'm going to search for and go to the schema builder. Okay. Now, I want to take a second to talk about the different types of relationships. Sometimes you're going to need to relate two different objects for one purpose or another. You could have this be a very loose relationship or you could have this be a close relationship. It's just going to depend on the situation. So here I've created a lookup relationship, which is the other type of relationship that's most commonly used within Salesforce. It's when you need to possibly relate something. These are two different and independent objects and sometimes they relate to each other. They don't always relate to each other, but sometimes they do. So we have project and external partners. Sometimes you're gonna have a project that needs to have external partners work on that project with you. So if you are, let's say you're building some type of home or maybe you're a renovation company. So you would have a particular project and sometimes your internal contractors, maybe not contractors, but like your internal plumber and HVAC person, maybe they're too busy. So you would then subcontract out to another person with that particular skill, and that could be your external partner. So sometimes you're going to need it, sometimes you won't. They're independent of each other, but sometimes they do connect. So that is not the type of relationship that we're going to create today. Today we're going to do the master detail relationship. So what this does look like is when there has to be a relationship between one to another. So I'm going to get rid of this external partners object here. So let's just imagine we have a project. On a project, you are going to have tasks. Each project will have tasks. Each task will have a project. So we're going to create that close relationship. So what this means is that we're going to have the project be the parent object. It's going to be the thing that houses the other tasks. And then we're going to have the tasks be the child object. And so whenever you create a task, it has to relate itself to a project. It can't just be floating in the internet somewhere hoping to find a partner project. So let's go ahead and create that object first. We're going to drag the object over and I'm going to have this project tasks. There might already be a tasks object. And so if I label it project tasks, it just, I know it'll get approved, I guess, from the system. All right. Does it start with a consonant? Yes. Okay. Let's go ahead and hit save here. So we have project and we have project tasks. So let's imagine this is the child and then this is the parent. That's often how it's referred to, I guess, for both relationships. It's more commonly used within a master detail relationship. So another way to say that is that the project is going to be the master object and then project tasks are going to be the detail object. So it's going to be the details of the project. So hopefully that makes sense either way that I'm describing it. Now, when we are creating this relationship, I'm going to use another term that's hopefully not going to muddy this up too much for you. But we want to create it on the child object when we are doing both lookup relationships and master detail relationships because you want for the project tasks, the child object to look up to the master object. So you'll always want to create it on the child so that it looks up to the master. So that's for both lookup and master detail. So hopefully that also makes sense. So I'm going to grab the master detail relationship and move it onto the child object. So we are going to have this be just the field label. I'm going to label project. Okay. And then it'll auto fill the project, 
the field name as project. We're going to relate this to the project object. Okay. And uh, it will show you that the child relationship name is going to be project tasks. We're going to pick the sharing settings. I'm going to leave it as is because this is a developer org and I don't really need to go into too much detail, but this is just a, a scratch org. Um, I'm going to read right so that we can show you it. And one thing that is something that you can toggle off and on is a reparentable master detail relationship. So that means, like, let's say we accidentally created a project task for project A and it really needed to go on project B. We could move that task from A to B. So that's what that means. I am going to check this yes. Okay. And I'm going to save. And I'm not gonna edit this down so you can see how long it took. Your mileage may vary. So now what you can see is with this red bar, you can see the relationship between these two objects. When it has this little circle and then three lines, that's when you know which object is going to be the child in the relationship. Okay, now because I've already created this, you can feel free to skip this, but I'm gonna show you what this looks like on the front end. I am going to go back into setup. I'm just going to go into another tab. And then what we do need to do is we need to go into tabs and create a tab for the project tasks. I've already created one for the project object, but this just makes it accessible on the front end of Salesforce. So I clicked new, going to the object of project tasks. Okay. Now I'm just going to choose a random tab style and I'm gonna keep all the rest of the settings. All right, now, once it saves, there we go. We're gonna go into the object manager and we're gonna go to project tasks and add that field to the page layout. That's one of the downsides of using the schema builder to create this relationship, it's super easy to see it and to make sure that you're doing it right, but it doesn't always add the relationship. It doesn't for the look of relationship, but it looks like it does for the master detail. Great, so I'm going to save that, even though I didn't do anything. And I'm gonna refresh the homepage. Now, if you're new to Salesforce, when you do something on the back end, you'll need to refresh the page on the front end to make sure that it's up to date. Okay, now I'm gonna search for project tasks and we're gonna go into project tasks and it should show. All right, I can't view this. Interesting, I've never come and run into that before, but okay, that was weird. It told me I needed to enter it into classic, but then it went into lightning. Okay, let's just go ahead and create new. And you can see here that we can add the project task name, and then we can add the project here as well. It will look fairly similar when you go onto the project task, when you have the particular records. I haven't added any project records or project task records here yet, but it should be there. And then you should also be able to see the project tasks as a related list on the project object. But that is going to be how you create a master detail relationship within Salesforce. Just as a recap, the master detail relationship is going to be a very close, tight-knit relationship. You have to have one to have the other. So you have to have a project to have any project tasks. Whereas the lookup relationship is going to be a loose relationship where you don't need to have a type of relationship. Sometimes there is between two different records and sometimes there's not. So hopefully that clears this up. I know it can be pretty tricky to understand the differences between the two. But with that being said, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a like and subscribe. You can connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter at Emily Call MBA. You can check out the courses on Salesforce Upskill, Udemy Business, and LinkedIn Learning. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.